Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Tuesday, July 10th, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, over there in Europe, over here in the States, everybody's up except Hang Sang, hanging just a little lower. And oil. Oil's up. Gold down. Bitcoin down. Still in that $6,000 range. Moved down pretty sharply. Can't seem to break out of that. But hey, $6,000 for a digital coin still is a lot of dough. So here in the States, Dow jumps more than 100 points. Post four-day winning streak as earnings kick off. That's right. We just had a real good, strong earnings season here in the States. Overall, corporate earnings up 24%. They expect them to go up again 20%. But hey, will those earnings keep popping up when those Trump tax cuts start cooling down? We will see. And very important, as we keep saying, the market's are over-leveraged and overvalued. And, as you well know as a Trends Journal subscriber, we're the first magazine to call the Trump rally, the first to call the end of it, the first to call a correction, and there are things to watch out for. For example, just three stocks are responsible for most of the market's gains this year. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Amazon, Netflix, and Microsoft together this year are responsible for 71% of S&P 500 returns and for 78% of NASDAQ 100 returns. Apple also makes up a large portion of both indexes, contributing 12% of both S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100 returns. Huh. What will happen if these stocks go down? Will the whole market go down? What if they crash? Will the markets crash? So, over-leveraged, over-valued. And you hear me say it over and over again. M&A activity and stock buybacks. Consumer companies drove deal-making to 15-year high in 2017. Get ready for 2018. Deals in the consumer goods industry rose 45% over the year period. The value of deals jumped 190%. And gold went down. And you know why? Dollar got stronger, looking to raise interest rates. Hey, what about all that debt? What's going to happen when interest rates go up? All the debt that's being accumulated. So, here's what they said about gold today on CNBC. So far, we've seen little or no impact on the gold market because of the trade war. The only dominant story is the dollar index. They're right. They're 100% correct. That's the dominant story. Where they're wrong is we see no or little impact on the gold markets because of the trade war. There is no trade war. That's why they're wrong. There is no trade war. There won't be a trade war because if there is, there'll be a real war. And oil prices went up. They got a strike over there going on in Norway. Still concerns about what's going to go on with Iran. Now there's talk that they may allow India and China to buy Iranian oil. That brought the prices down a little bit, but they're still pretty high up there. And what's also holding oil prices up, not a lot of oil coming out of Libya, thanks to the murder and destruction caused by the United States. NATO 
and the Arab Little League. What else do we have here? U.S. consumer debt in May rose the most in six months on more credit card outstanding and non-revolving loans, according to the Federal Reserve. So, what's going to happen when interest rates go up? You're already seeing a slowdown. And there's been real no wage gains. So the debt level's getting higher. The income levels are basically stagnant to down if you put in real inflation numbers into them. And what else do we have here? Well, talked about Bitcoin and it going down. There was some hacking, things going on in India, a couple of reasons. But something important as I was looking at information. Now, only 1% of total Bitcoin trading volume is done in that Chinese yuan. And that all changed in 2017, around December, when the Chinese said, we're closing down these markets. Now, do you know how much is coming out of the yuan into Bitcoin? It was around 90% back then. They're the ones that drove the prices up, 1%. I'm mentioning this not so much because of Bitcoin, but because of the power of the Chinese government. It's that communist government that's in full control. And what else do we have here? Emerging markets bolster their currencies, or they try to. Emerging markets, central banks use roughly $57 billion in foreign reserves in June which would rank as the largest monthly intervention since late 2016. But, you know, it's iffy if this kind of intervention helps. We've seen this over the years. They run out of money and the currencies keep going. So it's going to depend on what happens with the dollar because these currencies are in a lot of problems despite the juicing with reserve currencies. For example, Argentina has gone through already $10 billion in reserves in April and May. The peso recovered 4%. But you know what? It's down 34% for the year. The Brazilian currency, the real, down 14%. The Indian rupee, down 7%. It depends on the dollar. It depends on interest rates. Because if this dollar gets stronger, kiss the emerging markets goodbye, go back to oil, the prices today almost touched $80 a barrel for Brent crude. Remember, oil is priced in dollars, and countries like India, where you're seeing the rupee down 7%, and they need 80% of the energy is imported, what does it mean? Kiss the economy goodbye. And of course, we keep saying over and over again, look at copper prices. You know, Dr. Copper, he's everywhere. In high tech, to old industrial. Copper prices pick up strength after recent slide. Oh, they picked up a little bit. And again, copper and commodities are dollar based. Copper prices are down 14% this year. They're blaming it on trade tensions with China and the United States. You know what that is. Oh, 
Township Level, DEFCON 5. It's nothing to do with that. It's a slowing economy. Copper hit by sell-off after mystery Chinese investor unwinds a billion-dollar bet. That's not making the American news. The liquidation of $1 billion bet by a Chinese investor has roiled the copper market, triggering a violent sell-off that has seen the metal plunge to 12-month lows. Data released by the Shanghai Futures Exchange showed that huge future positions held by Gelin Dahao, a Beijing based brokerage had fallen from a net long of 36,050 lots last Wednesday to only about 10,000 lots yesterday. That's the equivalent of 130 tons of copper worth some $800 million. A Chinese guy that knows the deal. And here in the States, Trump, remember he was going to drain the swamp? Well, he pulled a cat right out of the heart of the swamp of D.C., this guy Kavanaugh, to be our next Supreme Court judge. What a joke. Supreme that, man. A little boy of nothing with a track record to prove it. By the way, check out this site that we posted when you go to Trends in the News from Pam Martin's Wall Street on Parade, it breaks down the money behind this guy. What a disgrace. I'm going to drain the swamp. You just pulled out a swamp creature with a track record to prove it, Jack. I should say Trump. And moving on with Trump, U.S. promotes Vietnam model for North Korea. The U.S. has urged North Korea to pursue the Vietnam model of economic reform after a tumultuous weekend of talks with North Korea about denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. You know what that is. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. What horseshit? Vietnam model. What does everybody have? Attention deficit disorder? A war based on lies. Killed over three million Vietnamese. Destroyed the place. I went there right after the United States finally made peace with them in 1996. They did it in 1995. It only took 20 years. Oh, that's the model little Pompeo wants to use, huh? Yeah, after we start a war, after we kill people, then let's do business. It makes perfect sense for a senseless bastard. And that's who's running the country near you. One senseless freak after another. Could you imagine speaking these words? Oh, I forgot. Hey, Vietnam is still a communist country. How come we're doing business with them? Same reason you're doing business with China. Because we're a bunch of sick bastards. And we'll make up any story to start wars, kill anybody that we want, Republican, Democrat, go up and down the line. But then when it comes to doing business, we're going to watch out there for their human rights record. Yeah, and sell out the country. And that's the model that Pompeo, or was it Pompous, is blowing out. What a joke. What a disgusting spectacle. And they say it and believe it. And that's what makes it even worse. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news. <laughs>